Peter Miller was a 24-year-old man who was found with a single stab wound at his home in Great Yarmouth on the 9th of December 1984. At 7.45pm on the Sunday, the 19th of December 1984, Peter Miller's body was discovered by his brother Anthony in the kitchen of his home in Camden Place in Great Yarmouth. Peter was last seen alive in the early afternoon on the 9th by a neighbour who he had helped with some of her repairs in her home. A post-mortem revealed his cause of death to have been from a single stab wound to his chest and at the time of the initial investigation, the suspected murder weapon had not been located. His brother was initially arrested for his brother's murder but was soon released afterwards. In December 2013, the Norfolk and Suffolk Joint Major Investigation Team had received fresh evidence in the case. This included a sharpened implement, which they suspect may have been used in the murder. They did not reveal how and where this evidence came from, but it is believed to have been hidden since the day of the attack. It was due to be examined to see if it had contained any forensic evidence. The police believed that the person who committed Peter's murder had been involved in some type of criminal behaviour before, due to the gravity of the offence. However, they are still unable to find any motive behind his murder. Some clues from the crime scene show there was no sign of a break-in and all doors were unlocked. Anthony reported at the time of finding his brother's body a strange smell when he entered the home and a CS aerosol canister was found on the floor inside Peter's home. It is suggested that either the murderer or Peter used the CS spray during the assault. Initial investigations during 1984 and 1985 resulted in some arrests but no one was charged with Peter's murder. Reviews in the following years have also failed to find any further lines of inquiry until the recent discovery of a suspected murder weapon, the Sharplet Implement. In December 2015, Anthony was set to complain about the police as it was revealed a year before Norfolk Police admitted that evidence relating to his brother's murder had been destroyed or returned to the original owners in 1991. The numbers of items was unknown. However, letters seen by the BBC listed 170 items of evidence had been cleared out. Letters also said that police were not able to find out who gave the order to destroy the evidence, but did admit it was disappointing that no longer they no longer had access to any f- of the forensic evidence. In the letter, the can of sea spray was recovered from the crime scene and was regarded as being clearly significant and was now unaccounted for. This evidence was handed to the original senior investigator, investigating officer within two months of the killing and when asked recently what had happened to this he said he simply cannot remember. Anthony suffers from post-traumatic stress due to his brother's death and cannot help but feel he has been fobbed off by the police on numerous occasions. He believes that chances were missed in the original investigation and said Officers did not collect formal statements from Peter's neighbours, although the police said they would. Anthony was quoted as saying, I'm going, to keep con- I'm going to continue fighting for Peter's justice because they, the Norfolk police, have stolen it. I want to show them that I will always be there, so deal with it now. I want them to stand up and say, we're sorry. These are the mistakes we've made. It's got to the point now where maybe an apology isn't enough. It's taken my life away. They are still trying to make excuses for the past. In December 2017, Anthony was campaigning for justice and was collecting signatures for a petition he intended to send to the Home Secretary at the time. Amber Rudd, 
and the town's MP, Brandon Lewis. His petition was aimed at Mrs Rudd and Mr Lewis to set up an inquiry into Norfolk Police's handling of the original murder investigation. As of September 2018, there have been no updates from the police regarding the sharp implement being linked to the investigation. The petition is still collecting signatures and can be accessed via a link I will add in the description box below. The current count of signatures as of making this video was 413 and after I have signed it, it will be 414. If this video gets 86 views that and each viewer signs the petition, it would mean the petition has reached its 500 signatures. So if you have the time, please sign the petition. There is also a Facebook group you can join called Unsolved Norfolk Murder of Pete Miller. If you have any information regarding this case, please contact the following. Unsolved Case Review Manager, Mr Andy Guy. Contact telephone number 01953 423 819. Or you can email at unsolvedcasereviews at norfolk.pnn.police.uk. Or you can ring up anonymously on Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111. Thank you all for watching today.